Hi folks, we're going to continue with some homework problems for chapter 3. Here's number 18. Katniss Everdeen shoots an arrow off of a 33 meter high cliff at an angle of 25 degrees below the horizontal. Now we haven't done a lot of problems below horizontal before. If the arrow leaves her bow traveling at 17.5 meters per second, at what final velocity does it stick into the ground? Be sure to account for both the horizontal and vertical velocities and the angle above the horizontal. Okay, so first off, let's take a look at this arrow that is shot. She's going to shoot this arrow off at 17.5 meters per second. And, oops, I'm going to actually erase where I put that, and I'm going to put that over here instead, 17.5 meters per second. And 25 degrees below horizontal, so this is 25 degrees. We want to know what is the original vertical velocity, and we want to know what is the horizontal velocity. Now the horizontal velocity, this is the adjacent side, so my horizontal velocity is going to be my hypotenuse, 17.5 meters per second, times, because this is the adjacent, I'm going to use cosine, times the cosine of 25 degrees. The original vertical velocity, that's going to be this side, is the opposite, it's not touching my angle, so that's going to be my hypotenuse, 17.5 meters per second, times the sine of 25 degrees. So I'm going to grab my calculator and calculate. So 25 cosine times 17.5, I get 15.9 meters per second is my velocity horizontal, put a bubble around that, and 25 degrees sine times 17.5 is 7.4 meters per second, and that's going to be my original vertical velocity. Now what the problem wants us to know, wants us to find out, is when she shoots this arrow, now she's standing on a 33 meter high cliff, when she shoots this arrow it's going to be a standard projectile and it's going to hit into the ground. We want to know the velocity at which it actually impacts the ground and we want to know this angle. How are we going to determine that? Well, we've done this before. This is going to be a velocity vector triangle where we use the horizontal velocity to find this part of the triangle and the final vertical velocity to find that side of the triangle. Well, we already know the horizontal velocity, we just found it up here. That's going to be my 15.9 meters per second. So I'm truthfully done with the horizontal part of the problem. But the vertical part of the problem, I have to now find my final vertical velocity. So let us figure that out. On the vertical stuff, I know the original vertical velocity is a positive 7.4 meters per second. Now why positive? I choose to call it positive because all the motion is in one direction. If you choose to say everything that's down is negative, that's okay. We can do that. It's you're the one who's solving your problem and you're the one who can figure that out. I want to find the final vertical velocity right before impact. I know gravity is going to make it accelerate downward at 9.8 meters per second squared and I know it is going to fall a vertical displacement of 33 meters. Now if I look at these variables, which equation does, does that collection of variables kind of lend itself to? It kind of looks to me like VF squared is VO squared plus 2 times A times Y, and I'm looking for final velocity. So final velocity is going to be the square root of this big ball of wax, original vertical, 7.4 meters per second, quantity squared, plus 2 times A, 9.8 meters per second squared, and Y, my 33 meters. When I put all of that into my calculator, what do I get for a final? Let's take a look. So I'm going to have 7.4 squared plus parentheses, well that's interesting, hmm, is it going to come back? If I tap the screen, what happens? Please come back. Please come back. Oh no! Oh. 
Oh, there it is. Yay. Uh, sometimes, you know, life is exciting. Okay, I get very excited when my screen comes back. 7.4 squared plus parentheses 2 times 9.8 times 33. Close parentheses um, plus that square, square root of the whole ball of wax, and I get a final vertical velocity of 26.5 meters per second. Okie dokie. Now that is, let's slide this up a little bit, see if my computer is going to behave. 26.5, that's this side of my triangle. 26.5 is that side of my triangle, and I want that right there. Well, I'm going to use plain old Pythagoras. a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and in order to find b, I'm going to end up with 26.5 squared plus 15.9 squared, add them, square root, the whole ball of wax, and I get a final velocity of 30.9 meters per second, which is quite fabulous. Now, the only other thing they want to know is they want to know this angle. What angle does the arrow stick above the horizontal in the ground? How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to have to use some of this data from the triangle to find that angle. This side is my adjacent. This side is my opposite. So I am going to use the trig function that has opposite and adjacent in it, which happens to be tangent. Tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. Opposite happens to be 26.5. Adjacent is 15.9. And so if I go 26.5 divided by 15.9 and second tangent or inverse tangent, I get an angle of 59 degrees. And how do I say that? The arrow is going to stick in the ground 59 degrees above the horizontal. All right, that will do it for Katniss Everdeen and her magic and amazing arrows. Let's do one more problem. Okay, um, number 19, the world record throw for hurling a cow pat. It was achieved in 1981 by Steve Erner. Assuming Steve threw the poo at approximately an angle of 45 degrees and 28.2 meters per second, what was the distance of his throw and how much time was this in the air? I haven't updated this problem, so maybe there's a new world record. I don't know. We want to know how far this was thrown and we want to know how much time this spent in the air. So what's the first thing we do if we have something that is shot off at an angle at some sort of a velocity? Well, we break that into components. So we have 28.2 meters per second at a 45 degree angle. We want to find the original vertical velocity and we want to find the horizontal velocity. The horizontal velocity this is my adjacent side, so it's going to be my hypotenuse 28.2 meters per second times the cosine of 45, and my vertical velocity is going to be 28.2 meters per second times the sine of 45. Now those of you who are mathematically astute realize that sine and cosine of 45 are the same value. So if you know one, you know the other. So both of these velocities, the horizontal velocity ends up being 19.9 meters per second, and the original vertical velocity ends up being 19.9 meters per second. And that's all because the sine and the cosine of 45 are the same. So let's go down here and take a look at our horizontal and vertical stuff. And let's see what we get. This is my horizontal stuff. Here's my vertical stuff. Horizontally, I'm looking for x. Don't know x, don't know time. So how can I find time? Well, I can find it on the vertical side. We've done that many times. We're on planet Earth, so we know acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. Do we have to have a positive and a negative in this one? Yeah, the motion's going up and it's going down. So I'm going to call up positive and I'm going to call down negative because of the fact that we have both up and down motion in the same problem. My original vertical velocity is a positive 19.9 and when it hits the ground over here it's going to be going a final vertical velocity 
of a negative 19.9 meters per second. Well, I can use this to find time. So V O, V F, A and T, what equation does that kind of look like? To me, that looks a lot like V F is V O plus A T. Let's solve this little monster for time. And time is going to be, time is going to be final minus original divided by A. Final velocity is a negative 19.9 meters per second minus original 19.9 meters per second divided by our old friend gravity which is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared so how long is this going to be in the air 19.9 divided by 9.8 um, I get a time of 4.06 seconds that the cow pats in the air that's a long time for flying poo all right, now we need that in order to find displacement. So x is going to be horizontal displacement times time. Horizontal velocity is 19.9 meters per second. I think I misspoke somewhere, but fortunately I'm writing at the same time, and hopefully you're following that. 19.9 meters per second times my time of 4.06 seconds. And multiply that by 19.9, and I get a horizontal distance of 80.8 meters is the distance thrown. All right, that will do, and we'll see you again.